Hello everyone, this is Sinema. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And we are in Poland. So this is another travel vlog thing that you're going to see when you see this. We are not, it's not live. So you will see this after the fact. But we are in Poland. Yes. Why are we here? Uh, because of PortalCon. We are here for PortalCon. We got invited by Ignacy Cevicek to come to PortalCon. Don't really know what it's going to be. And we wanted to share with you what is going on there. We are now in Katowice, which is the city where... Portal Gun is, but we were earlier today in Krakow. Yeah. And we met with Vincent from Lucky Duck Games and we did a little video there. So now we're gonna travel in time, back in time for that, and we're gonna see you tomorrow for Portal Gun. So we are here in this hallway, and if you see closely on this store, it says Lucky Duck Games. That means that this is actually the headquarters of Lucky Duck Games. And we are here now to see if Vincent is here and if you want to show us around. It would be really sad if he wasn't here because we just spoke to him. Uh, yeah, no, okay, we're doing this like it's a, a, a TV show. Okay, so okay, we will see if, if, if it's open. open. Okay, let's see if Vincent is home. Oh my gosh, you came to Krakow! This is amazing! He's here, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Um, hello, how are you? How are you doing? I'm very good. I'm super happy to have you guys here. It's super fun. Like we, we really was looking forward to this to see the inner works of a board gaming publisher. Well, it's it's my real pleasure. You know, we rarely have visitors, so it's my great pleasure to show you around and uh, and share a little bit of how the sauce is made. That's good. Let's look at the sauce. So where do you want to begin? Should we go in here? Yeah, sure. Let's start. Uh, so uh, so this is where uh, most of the Krakow team is seated. Uh, we actually stayed in two offices, Krakow. And more so, so we are uh, so half of the team is here. Come around. Um. So um, with my Olomian cold cord, I will gonna show you around. Uh, in this part of the office, uh, actually they are not here yet, but uh, Carol is working for me as a, a full-time writer, and um, and Martin is our CTO. Actually, if you come around Martin's office, you'll see some very unusual things for a uh, for a board game company. Which is a lot of devices. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, one of the, some of the game that uh, made us famous is called uh, Chronicles of Crime, and uh, we're working on uh, a new series of Chronicles of Crime called Millennium that takes place uh, in uh, 1400, 1900, and 2400. And as you can see, this is some kind of uh, nobody has seen this yet. Uh, some um, basically the some of the prototype components of uh, the 1400 version of uh, Chronicles of Crime. And so uh, Martin is our chief technical officer. He's not here today. Uh, Friday he works from home. But uh, as you can see, there's a lot of devices here. Um, in this room, looks like everybody went for lunch. Uh, so you have Zofia with our customer support manager and Tio with our director of logistics. Um, and uh, the rest of the team uh, pretty much sits here. Uh, we have uh, eight people full-time in Krakow. Um, and uh, well, as you can see, it's a little bit messy because you know we make things, it's creative. Uh, but uh, uh, I can show you a little bit uh, my shelf. This is my messy desk. Uh, some of the stuff that are here are often a game that we are either contemplating to uh, to uh, to publish, license. Uh, one of the games that we have licensed recently is the Isle of Cat in French and actually we just received a couple sample of the English version. If you don't know the Isle of Cat, do you guys know the Isle of Cat? Yeah. It's amazing. I absolutely love this game. I think Frank did an amazing, amazing job. So yeah, anyway, so that's the kind of office part. I'm going to show you around. Uh, uh, We've never been here before. The, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not true. It's not true. This is just a... <laughs> Uh, all right, so let me show you uh, the other parts. Um, so welcome to, uh, to, this is our kind of support side and storage. So as a good publisher, we as have a spare part of every board game we've published. And with the years, this uh, stuff grows. So this is how it looks like a lot of drawers with a lot of spare parts. For example, those are like, Spare parts for Jetpack Joyride. Uh, this, I mean, our uh, largest game has been, uh, 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 sorry, my name is Vincent, Vikings Gone Wild. So there's a lot of Vikings Gone Wild cards. You also have some Chronicles of Crime mini cards. You have some 
some different uh, locations. Um, as I mentioned, it's uh, the assembly of a board game is always manual. It's never automated. And so people make mistakes. And so we are always here to make sure people get replacement or when something get damaged. So this is, uh, we have a bit of a storage also of, of, uh, of many of uh, other games. But most of our games are stored in a warehouse. Uh, actually, we have five warehouses. We have a warehouse in Poland, Germany, France, US, and Canada. So uh, when it comes to a point where we really need to send a full game, then those are sent from those warehouses, not from here. Um, and if you come over here, uh, this is uh, basically our, the playroom. It's, uh, it's loaded with board games and a lot of Legos. Um, and uh, this is really just uh, the place where we come to play test or simply board game night. Um, I am a little cuckoo about uh, trains and, uh, and Legos, I guess, uh, but uh, it makes for a nice decoration. And uh, voila, that's, that's, uh, it doesn't need much more than that. As I mentioned earlier, there is also another eight people in Warsaw. Uh, so who is not in this uh, is uh, the, most of the creative team. So Filip Mijnski, um, uh, Przemek, uh, which is our uh, manufacturing manager and the entire um, game development team, Michał, um, Wojtek uh, and, and other people who, uh, who work with us. We will actually be 20 people full time also uh, in, in, uh, in February. Um, and we have people in the U.S. permanently. Anthony Boyd uh, is our director of sales in the U.S. and make sure we are present in at least a, a dozen conventions in the U.S. And, uh, and we're present in France as well. Leandre Proust is our French uh, director of sales uh, for the French speaking countries. And actually I'm sure we have over 30 conventions present in France. Oh, yeah, in France specifically. And that's it. Uh, you know, there's not much to see. And unfortunately, you came at a point where it's lunchtime, so nobody was there. It's a bit, a bit ghost town, but it gives you an idea. So thank you so much for coming to visit us. It is more values next, but it's important. Uh -huh. um, first thing that happens is that there'll be a quick little uh, bid round for which color cars you're gonna have. And each of us is gonna have at least one car each. Somebody with six with six cars is gonna have two of them, basically, because there's only five of us. But you're gonna basically deduct how much you spend on the cars at the end of the game of your winning score. So it's about how much money you've got. E, four, five, oh, oh yeah, it's nice in there, bottle there. And then orange, bonk. <laughs> <laughs> It, if it can move to. forwards, it has to, but oh, you can decide the route. Yeah, I don't, yeah, but I don't have to move it by the nice route. Oh, I just okay. have to move it forward from okay. this space. And as long okay. as I can do that, just because it's stuck there, okay. is okay. a tough so thing. Yeah. You could have, stuck. like, if it was uh, John's turn, he would have moved this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I moved it in a less favorable right. way. Okay, so now we're in the press room and it was quite good. So we got all these games over here and they're in English. I think that's the best part right now. We've been scanning these other shelves outside where there are a lot of, yeah, Polish versions. And we tried the, the car game that I don't remember the name of. And we had to use like uh, the um, scanning camera thingy with the Google Translate to actually yeah, understand what our special abilities was, but it, w it was fun. And Luke uh, knew the game already, so he taught us. That helped a lot too.
this looks beautiful. I haven't, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen anything about it. Johannes probably has. It looks beautiful though. So this is our first year, but we are warned that this place is going to fill up. So we'll probably grab a space here and play something. At the end of the day, we ask if we can take you to the hotel that for tomorrow. Done <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. I can teach Kubrider, so uh, that's not a problem. Because, because yeah, because last time when people started a long game, they would finish it, and then there was that no chance. some noise to prove that we are live here. Hey! We are just lucky people who are able to come to Poland to see in person the things that we have announced today. And I'm very excited about the things we will present. So let's start the first trailer for today. Gather your friends. The adventure awaits. Discover new lands. Reveal the mystery. Game night experience. Immerse yourself in a mysterious plot. Follow leads, discover clues, become a detective. Become a leader. <laughs> Build a vast empire. Easier, faster to finish about two hours of gameplay. You can pick any of these. Each of these cages has a very, very different theme. <coughs> so you will have, uh, for example, a chance to visit the Great Britain. And if you watch the movie called Nights Out, one of these cages is very, very similar. We will have a mansion, we have a pronouncement, but this is basically what we offer you this year. Once again, lots of board games tell stories, new content for detective, new stand-alone game in the vein of detective, an uh, epic Kickstarter for the Robinson Crusoe, and a lot of new decks, a lot of new decks for Empire of the North and this amazing, amazing campaign for Imperial Setters. This is what we have for you. The first thing that you will be able to enjoy and experience is uh, Under the Radar, the new case for Detective for free for you this February, and Roman Banner, 20th of uh, February, as well as CJ in Poland, in Europe, in America at the same time. Thank you. An open world campaign because you don't have to play with same players each game. Uh, the mechanism of the game is that during each game, you will gain new provinces that will give you some new actions and productions. So it means that you will be stronger because you are getting them at the very beginning. So you don't need to spend resources in order to get them and you have them from the start. But you also have your provisions on the map and for those you will have to spend uh, resources in order to even be able to win the game. So. Uh, let's say I crossed out those during the previous game, so if in the next one I won't pay two apples during any time of my turn, so I just basically put them during uh, the game, and if I won't pay them, 
uh, like my score is zero at the end of the game. So you cannot win if you don't pay your villagers that you just gained. So even if the player ain't played that many games as the other ones, either though they have new provinces, so they are like more experienced, they also have higher costs of their empire. And we have three tracks here, which are connected with our quests during the game. And they are meant to be like a race. So the first player who will... Uh, okay, here. They're double-sided because the first player to be able to accomplish the quest will gain more points of the progress, on the progress uh, which is military and uh, diplomacy, I would say. The next one is administration and uh, economy. And the last one is culture and the science. So those are thematically uh, like um, set in common. Those are mostly about having gold and having uh, cards in the hands. It means like this uh, about having cards is administration part, but you also will have ones like have your in supply. So this one is like more economic. So those are thematically like built in into one section. When you will achieve them, you will cross out those sections uh, and uh, you also have the science and the cultural, which means uh, they will be like, have the exact amount of some stuff, so like alchemy, this will, could be named like alchemy. So you need to have resources of all kinds. And the first player to achieve that will gain three of these points and uh, next players will only get one. And uh, one of these uh, missions of, of each kind will be placed before all the players and the first to achieve will also gain the bonus here. The first achieved, so you have more points here and you also have this bonus and then there is available for the rest of the players. And the thing here is that at the some points of this track, you will have bonuses. So let's say I should have, okay. So let's say when I will reach the third space here, I will uh, be able to unlock, uh, let's say the head start. And in the rule book, it will be like, if you unlock this icon with the head start, start each next game with additional sword. And let's say if you will go from here to let's say here, and you will have this, the dove. And let's say you will gain the dove token and you can place it on any of your buildings. And this building, uh, when it will be raised, you will get additional sword. So when you will unlock those goals with the missions, you will also be able to use this additional like progress uh, of your faction for each next game. And as you can see, there is also this new age statement. So when you will at any point go beyond the last space on the antique board, you will go to the medieval one. So it should be somewhere here. Okay. So as you can see, you will have the new board. So you lost all of your mm, provinces, so you don't have to pay more, and you don't have uh, additional ones because the new era has arrived. Here you will have new skills uh, presented on those spaces. Those will be more powerful. And also, after each game, you will receive the number of, let's say, uh, I would, say progress too but it will have different wording like knowledge for example so for each point you gained during the game you will get the same amount of this knowledge and each player will be able to get one card of the same euro so we start with the antique and we can access the antique cards which we will be able to buy with our progress 
So let's say I gained uh, 60 points during the game, so I can buy all the cards uh, and the one that will be left, so I bought the 55, so five will be left here for the next games. And those will stay with me even though I changed era, but I will also access the cards from the next category. And they are also more powerful as well. So even though I will lose my provinces, and also I won't have as many costs here because I lost them, I will be able to unlock better, uh, those are called inventions. So I will be able to invent something like cartography, not the wheel from the ancient times, something like the civilization vibe, something like that. And also those better bonuses on the, oh sorry, on the progress board here. And also quest track is about uh, tracking how many stuff we have achieved here. So let's say I will have my science token here and each time I will uh, have an, another brown, red or gray, I will just move it forward. So I can track how far I am with completing my quests. And basically that's it. Mm, if you, oh, also there is a third era because in game you have three eras. After medieval we have the industrial or maybe it will be called renaissance. And I will have to discuss it with our graphic designer yet. But so you know, it's not like you have the wooden villages and then you have something from the industrial era. So it will be something like Uncanny Valley there. So we will have three eras, for sure. You will have this race, new provinces which are like connected to those maps. So you gain more, but you have to spend more. You will achieve stuff which will unlock you the new abilities for your faction. And then of course inventions, uh, which are in the five uh, types and you cannot have two of the same time. So if you would like to have another type of, let's say, orange, you would have to replace it. So if I have three of those, I can either buy new color or I will have to replace one of those. And it comes with the uh, coming of the new eras because let's say I, I really like to use the mansionary card and uh, that will mean that I won't be able to buy the medieval orange card, so I will try to get other colors so they're not immediately replaced during the next game. No. Oh. Let's just do it, it doesn't matter. Oh no, there is only 18 glory, hang on, that's what. Oh yeah, so there's okay. only 18. Yeah, there's six times three, Jesus oh, Christ, man. This is 24 sorry. by ass. <laughs> Yeah. The arrows gonna do the other one. Then why is Neo he's in here? Probably because they're related to one of the other faction okay. pieces. Are they face down or face up? Face down for now. Yeah, we don't need these. Yeah, we do. No, you won't no, need the green paper anymore. You only needed 18 tokens. Yeah, sorry. But there's only 16 tokens. Ah, you, said, you said there was 18 tokens. I was correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do I, do I need to go get a smartphone and get you the times table banner screen? <laughs> yeah. Right, now flip them over and put them in order of ascending uh, value. And this is six or nine? Uh, it'll be a six, there is no. Oh, yeah, I think they're all even numbers there's for a, a kickoff. But you can also see it on the. There's a, there's a shape, yeah, it's a literal shape. Now I need to find the six most simplest ones, which are probably going to be a minotaur, it's probably straightforward. Hello. Hello, Norwegians. Okay, we are in a car. I'm not driving as you can see because we have a self-driving car which is the it's future. It's amazing, you should get that. Uh, it should be said that we are on a ferry so basically it's driving on the ferry but it's standing still on the ferry going over. Yeah. So we are on our way home of the PortalCon. We didn't film too much but we did, there wasn't really a lot to film so this no. basically was more like a you got two pieces of news in this video actually. You got mm -hmm. the <coughs> interview by Joanna or the, the overview of the new Rise of the Empire, uh, wasn't it called that? Rise of the Empire? I think so. Rise of the Empire, Rise of the... I think it was Rise of the Empire. You know this better the than The expansion, me. new expansion, the campaign expansion Rise for... Rise of an Empire, Rise of the Empire. Yeah, yeah, it's okay like now. Uh, the new expansion... You probably know, because you were Imperial watching the Settlers. video. Yeah, really, really, yeah, that's true. And also, actually, the first ever pictures of the new uh, Chronicles of Prime expansion, which yeah. is really cool. Those are really that's nice. Cool. Great, great artwork. So we... 
we really <coughs> didn't know what to expect from PortalCon. We basically mostly went to hang out with Luke from Broken Meeple and meet Ignazi and Mary and all the people from Portal. Yeah. And uh, it was nice to be there. So for you at home that like think like, oh, what is this PortalCon? What, what is PortalCon? So PortalCon is basically like a con for Polish people. A one day. One day. Con. One day. And they share some news about uh, what Portal is doing, mm-hmm. like worldwide, but also like what they're translating to Polish mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, and we play some games, and we try to find some English games, which was hard. Yeah, I mean, mostly it was in Polish. Five people, which was even harder than, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so there was like a press room where we could play like the the new games that Portal is bringing over, which was probably more exciting for other people than us because we had played most of those games before yeah but there was some someone that i haven't played yeah also we played smartphone inc yeah i want to play half of that game in in essen 2017 or 2018 2018 and you haven't played it no i thought it was really fun i really enjoyed like the uh, action selection mechanism where you lay the tiles mm-hmm. the way you want the symbols to show and also the balance between being first and selling yeah. first uh, versus getting actually high prices for your products and maybe not get not to sell, sell anything as much. Yeah, since mm, I yeah. managed to not do it last round. That is interesting. But yeah, like most of the program for PortalCon is in Polish. Yeah. But there's a lot of like keynotes. Yeah, they have they had like this this the uh, twenty years of Portal. They like a whole like going through the history of Portal. They had an auction. It did had they? an auction. Yeah. yeah, and they have like a, a Ignacy quiz. was doing the auction. <coughs> he was doing most of the things. Yeah. Like he's a really he, he could have like had other people do that, but he, I think, he just enjoys doing it, and it's like the face of the of the company. Yeah. So people probably in Poland know Ignacy uh, because they see him at this con, and there's quite a few people there. Like I, I wasn't sure how many people would be there, but I think it was like 500 tickets sold. Oh, that's. With also like a. Bit, that's more than I expected, actually. About a hundred extra for like VIPs and uh, uh, and press and, and everything. Yeah. But it was nice. Like they had a small ri- library of games, which were. The games like the original Portal games and also the games that Portal had brought over to Poland because mm. they do a lot, as you said, a lot of publishing. And also it was the keynote which you have seen already uh, both on this video and you can see it live. So if you want to see more on that, yeah. let's do like a couple of minutes. Like, like first off, like we were happy to go. Yeah. But this was really this is really for for Polish people. This is Polish thing. <laughs> I don't think like as a normal board gamer. Um, you would go here like if you don't speak Polish or if you just if you love portal games like if you want to be the first in the world not on the online to see the mm. the news and uh, and be able to it's more about meeting the people for us yeah yeah absolutely. Uh, because there's such lovely people mm-hmm. in the board game industry and uh, we love it and also next time uh, we want to bring our own games if there isn't <coughs> one for English people yeah but it was like uh, it, we could have played more in the best room we yeah just, we could if we really wanted to play more games we yeah, could have yeah. played more games there Easily. so it, there was enough games enough room and enough tables so it wasn't mm. really a problem that way no it wasn't but I feel like like it um, yeah it's not gonna be an interesting con to go for if you don't speak Polish or if you're not pressed basically because you will only have a, a library of Polish games yeah that's true Oh, lights are coming on. That means that yeah. we are soon going to the port, into the harbor. Or the dock, the dock. as someone commented. We Which know what it is now. In, in, in that video. <laughs> it is a callback to another video. We probably haven't seen it. So it's a Ramley Review Street. Go and see it for that connection if you need that. It's the you overarching, don't need it. you don't <coughs> no, it's the overarching story arc of Wargaming Ramblers. Yeah, Ramblas. it's important. But yeah, we we saw a couple of the the new games that you might have already seen on uh, online. Uh, there's new stuff for Detective, which we love. Oh, we're so hyped for that. We are <coughs> like in the middle of the LA campaign. Yeah. Um, we need to finish that. We do because there's like a new scenario for that, which yes. concludes that uh, campaign. I'm so excited for more mm-hmm. detective stuff. But the, the thing that changed now is that everything is coming out this year is standalone. What do you feel about that? Um, I really love the or- overarching story mm-hmm. in the first detective game, so I, I really need to see how they mm. have solved this, because yeah. it can be, yeah, it's much easier to get it played, I like that, but as long as it doesn't take away that enjoyment that I had, mm-hmm. and we, we have to wait and see. Yeah, because for me, a lot of the enjoyment was the overarching story. Like to see, like, oh, this happened three scenarios ago, and going back to that, oh, and having yeah. that like board this, of everything. This like is one of the 
only board gaming moments that have given me actual goosebumps mm-hmm. and shivers down my back and yeah but I think like with you it's really positive for most people because you can play easier with more players or with, yes. with your friends just coming out and you can uh, you can easily get it out on just a normal game night and play it which is a better yeah like for, for many people this will be a lot better yeah. uh, as we play just the two of us detective this might be a way to play it with more players because you can just play that one scenario if somebody's interested to do that. Yeah, and they also have this uh, the the free demo or something that you can yeah, 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 yeah. introduce. That's super. It's also cool, yeah. And, and there's a new scenario by Rob Davio, which looks really nice. Yeah. And also there's like the, the big one for us is the new Vienna Connection, I think it's called, mm. which is kind of a new game based on the, the detective game, but it, Expanded and added and made a different game, but with the same like card system, but with a lot more stuff going on. You kind of you are spy CIA agents uh, in yeah, the 1970s. Yeah, you're not police anymore. It's you're 1970s, spies. and that looks really really cool. Don't really have any information except like a little teaser trailer, which you can see in the. Uh, if you go to the Portal YouTube channel, you can see the live cast there. But all in all, it was a nice trip. We did some escape rooms today, and it was fun. Yeah, and, it was and, really fun. And we had fun, so. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Is there anything you want to add at the end? Yeah, I just want to go back to our meeting with Wins. Yeah, that Lucky was Duck, so nice. Because that was so nice. And what I love about Wins is that he's so he's so humble. He's, he's, uh, he, we were talking about how he managed to get this group together mm-hmm. and his story of building this company. And he was just like, oh, but I met these other guys. And they're, they're really they do good. All the work. They are so much better than me, but together we make a great team and I love them. And uh, yeah. it was so cool. And it's so cool like to, to meet these amazing people like Wins and Ignazi and Mary, who is Ignazi's wife. And uh, we also did a lot of work for Portal. And I, I just think there's just so many nice people in, in, in these board game companies that really have passion for board games. And, and what we talked about is that we think it's so nice that uh, the actual like the CEOs, the yeah, bosses, yeah. It's the faces that we mm-hmm. see and we know and we can relate to and we can follow what they do on social media and we yes. can and they uh, are passionate about this hobby mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of like branches and yeah things in life you can say that about. Mm. I don't know. I'm not into the car making industry no. or the ferry making industry or the I don't know no but it's not but, but it's like it kind of in like Nintendo you know that boss of Nintendo you know all of that things that's but true it's, but yeah it's really nice that way I, I love the board game industry and just love to be I love that we are getting to be a, a big part of it which, which is really amazing yeah I do too so yeah should we end it there because the ferry is yeah we have to drive the, the car have, I have to drive the car again it's not self driving anymore turn off this which would make it a better video <laughs> that is, we rambled for eight minutes, but that was nice. Yeah, it did. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this little vlog, which is kind of different. But we, we we are going to go to some conventions and do this, and we're going to do, of course, daily vlogs from UK Games Expo, Gen Con, and Spiel. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yes, yeah. many months away, but it's it's only four months until UK Games Expo. So yeah, yeah, like time. Time is going to go fast. Before that, more reviews, more top tens, more yeah. fun, and. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. And I'm Sarah. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.